Hello. Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Ken. This is Nurse Nisha, and this is the next edition of Monday Night Live. Yes. We're, we're so glad to have you. Yeah, and we're in a different area of the house because we're Sans babysitter and Beckett is asleep right there. So we're having to do it near him so yeah. he doesn't wake up and wonder where we are. <laughs> this broadcast might be any inter interrupted at any moment. So then you'll get to see baby Beckett. So it won't be all bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're just doing a QA and a tonight. Yes. I think Q&As are very important and we don't do enough of them. So I uh, pulled the trump card tonight. So let's do a Q&A because when one person has a question about the proper human diet, keto, ketovore, carnivore, that means that there's a thousand people out there who also have that question. Right. And so I think it's very important every now and then just to sit down and just bang out as many answers to as many questions as we possibly can. So that's what we're going to try to do tonight. Uh, key, key phrase, as many as we possibly can. Yeah. Obviously, we can't answer every single question. We try to hit the ones that are going to help the most people. Exactly. So uh, we're not singling you out. Let's just tell the cookie, keto cookie crumbles. Yeah, yeah. We're going to try to answer as many as we can. But we do pick, uh, try to keep your question succinct yet uh full of as much information as possible but uh it's very hard to answer three paragraph questions so right. so keep them short but yet relevant and we'll try to answer as many as we can first tell us where you're watching from what city what state what burg what shire what country what, shire? what um what else is there shire town burg what are they parish call in what parish London. yeah what's it what district districts. are you watching yeah. from? Yeah, I want to know where you're at in the world right now. Um, also, while we're getting everybody in here, I want to mention that Kim Howerton and I wrote a cookbook last year. It has been updated, and she bundled two cookbooks together. You can find the link, link up here on Facebook, down here on YouTube. And it's $20 for both books. And it does have my grandmother's chocolate pie dr a recipe in there. It has... Uh, the pumpkin loaf that Kim does in there. There's oh. a bunch of recipes, really, really good ones. Ones that we use yep. during the holidays all the time. And this is an electronic book. It's yes, not it's an actual e -book. paper book. Right. So you can just download it. Which is good because then you can have your tablet or your phone in the kitchen with you and just scroll through and look at the recipe or while you're you, cooking. You can just print it off. A lot or of people really. You can print it off. I'm old school. I don't really like doing it that way. I want a paper you in front of me. Paper Plus paper. sometimes you want to mess around and like change things and yeah. you can just write on there too. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Any idea how many recipes are in? It says on there, I think it's 60. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. But it says on the website. And these are all keto friendly. Kim Howerton and Nisha Berry, Solace oh Berry my approved. gosh, we're having a black people already. Go away. No politics. No politics, guys. Just health, just nutrition, yes. just medicine. Let's all get healthier together. Ignore all of the, the trauma and the strife and the drama. Focus on you tonight. Focus on your health. What question do you have that you think may be holding up improving your health? That's what we want to talk about tonight. Uh, several of you have made my cornbread and my dressing already to test it out for Thanksgiving and you like it. I love that. Hearing your feedback. So make sure if you make it, tag me on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you post and let me know how you like it. If you and, don't have that recipe, it's over on my YouTube channel. And save me a piece, would you? And on my book. Because I love it. You don't have to be saved a piece. I'm cooking Dr. it for Barry you. Dr. loves it. Cooking it for you. What do you want to, you just want to, boom. Boom, yeah, jump in, jump in. I'm okay. Gonna help okay, as many well, people as we can tonight. Oh my goodness, they're going the way out. Okay. What do you think about eating dairy, bacon, and beef on with a fatty liver? Ada. <sighs> Okay, Ada, it's a great question. So uh, I'm going to try to sum this up so I can help as many people as I can, including Ada. What causes fatty liver, Ada, is not eating fat. Okay, your doctor may have even said, don't eat saturated fat, it'll cause fatty liver. That's not true at all. That's not how the physiology works. I've got a, several videos on my YouTube channel about fatty liver. What causes fatty liver is eating too many total carbohydrates. Okay. And the more processed the carbohydrate is, the worse it is. So a honey bun is way worse than whole wheat bread, which is way worse than uh, Nisha's keto cornbread. And so there's a spectrum of goodness and badness. You want to stay towards the keto end as much as you can. 
Eating fat does not cause fatty liver. Eating too many carbs does. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to say your question. Guess it. Sadovo no. Mm -mm. no. <laughs> Could you please comment on your thoughts on cheese and nuts hindering weight loss on a ketogenic diet right now? I'm hitting a plateau. Yeah. Now, first of all, let's talk about plateaus, or some people call them weight loss stalls. First of all, that's that's maintenance. So that's good. That's not necessarily bad. I, I understand you want to lose more weight. But when you plateau, that means that you're not gaining weight, right? That's a good thing. Uh, sometimes our bodies need to take a break of a few weeks or even a few months of, of just being maintenance. And then your body will start to lose weight again. With that being said, some people need to be lower carb than other people. I'm one of those people. Nisha can eat lots of nuts and still keep her figure. Hmm. I, on the other hand, I have to really watch the nuts. I have to really, really cut back on even vegetables because that's too many carbohydrates for my personal physiology. So for some people, and for me, cheese, if I leave cheese completely out of my diet, I'll drop another two or three pounds. And that's kind of my maintenance right there. If I start eating cheese every day, I'll gain 35 pounds and that'll be my new baseline. So it, it could be the nuts. It might be the cheese. Uh, give your maintenance. Let's not call it a stall. Let's call it maintenance. After three months of maintenance, if, you, if you're still trying to lose and you haven't, then I would try a month without the nuts and uh, plus or minus without the cheese and see how it goes. You always say things that are going to confuse people. What like, did I say? You called it maintenance, and that's not what anybody uses that term well, I'm trying for. To, I'm trying to shift the language because a weight loss stall – that sounds like I know, you but failed. Everybody calls maintenance. I'm at the weight that I want to be in, so I'm at Well, that's your goal weight. That's got to. That's, that's the gotta, term. I'm just. Saying. That's got a name. That's not what he means by that. Right. Linda says my mom has Alzheimer's and dysphagia. Will keto help? Yeah, keto is not going to cure Alzheimer's or dysphagia, but it is going to slow down the progression, and it is going to perhaps stop the progression altogether. Uh, the best FDA approved medications on the market today. The only claim that they have is that they can slow down the progression a little bit. Not a single one of those pills says we can reverse it or stop it in its tracks or cure it. None of, none of those pills do that. All they can do is slow down the progression a tiny bit. Uh, in my experience with uh, multiple patients with dementia, including Alzheimer's, uh, keto, if done properly, can slow down the progression significantly. William is a trucker. Hey, we were William. just talking today about how much we appreciate truckers. So yeah, we were driving out. down I-40 and uh, I just recently listened to a book. I think it was Omnivore's Dilemma. I think that maybe not. I don't know. I listened to a lot of books. But they were talking about how difficult it is to be an over the road trucker and how it's just if you don't have your ducks in a row, it can just be a not a great life. So we really appreciate all the truckers out there. That's 100 percent true. So William's question is he's doing keto with limited fridge space, very minimal fridge yep. space yep. and can only keep so much food and snacks. Do you have any advice? Yeah. So you want your food to be as nutrient dense as you can possibly get it. Uh, also realize that there are things that in, in the United States we think have to be refrigerated that don't have to be refrigerated. OK, uh, one is eggs. You do not have to refrigerate your eggs. Number two is butter. Now, if you're if it gets really hot in your rig, it'll melt, run everywhere. But if, you, if it's room temperature or cooler in there, the butter never has to be put in the fridge. So that saves you two little storage spots right there for more meat. Then I would pack up on the most nutrient dense meats that you can stick in your fridge. And hopefully you've got some kind of little cooking instrument there you can cook that with. If not, you can always eat it raw. If it smells good. Any other ideas you could think on saving space in a little tiny fridge? Well, I don't know about leaving eggs out unless they're fresh out of a chicken's butt. Yeah, eggs can. Remember when we were in the UK? The eggs are just on the yeah, shelf. But I think they had the. No, they're just eggs. Okay. I don't want you to put your eggs outside. Keep them in the fridge. <laughs> okay. Uh, jerky. If you can make your own jerky while you're at home, mm. like the few weeks that you're home, make a bunch of jerky and you get to put the ingredients in yep. and then that can stay yep. forever. And that's super delicious. No refrigeration. Required. No refrigeration required. Yep. Easy to eat while you're driving or yep. doing whatever you need to do. 
and that's and bacon same thing you can cook a bunch of bacon ahead of time put it in a ziploc bag or oh. a container and that'll stay great as long as it's already cooked and those type of things like just pre-cooking stuff like that will help save space too absolutely yeah keep it between the lines william <laughs> Um, can we eat eggs every day? Yeah. Sorry, that just went yeah, they're, right away. For years, we've been told eggs are dangerous. First, they would cause a heart attack. Remember that? Now, the research is definitely disproven <clears throat> that. That's not true at all. Now, the new thing that they're going to try to say, and I can already see it coming, is that eating too many eggs could, could increase your risk of diabetes. And I've already uh, done a, one YouTube video about that, and I'll probably do some more because it's complete and utter foolishness. Eggs are fat and protein vitamins and minerals. That's what's in an egg. It may be half a gram of carbohydrate. You can eat as many eggs a day as you want. William, for example, could boil 12 dozen eggs and just and put them in Ziploc bags and he could just eat he could eat a dozen eggs every day. It would actually it would if he's got fatty liver, it would help to reverse it. If he's got type 2 diabetes, it would help to reverse it. Anytime you're eating fat and protein, that is the proper human diet. So there, there is no upper limit of eggs that become unsafe. That's that. There is no known number. Uh, Eat your eggs. In the in the EU, they don't wash their eggs. That's why I can sit out. In the United uh, States, they wash the. They wash the bloom off. Okay, yes. got it. In Europe, they don't. Refrigerator eggs. <laughs> If you're I in the states, I don't. I don't. And you don't of course have backyard chickens. Now we have but fresh we have backyard ones. chickens yeah. that has the bloom yeah. on yeah. it. Still. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, here's a good one, Sarah. We get this question a lot. Do you think Walmart meat is okay? Kroger, Publix, whatever, just the normal yeah. everyday average Joe, Jill meat. Yeah. Is that okay? I think so. For uh, unless you can afford to do better, all the time we're talking about what is less good, what is more good, what's less bad, what's more bad. So in this instance, definitely. The grass finished, grass fed uh, beef with no antibiotics, no hormones, none of that stuff. That's the best. There's no doubt about that. Okay. But if you buy the cheapest ground beef or minced beef they have at Walmart, Kroger, or whatever your supermarket is, that is still 1,000 times better than the junk food that you used to eat. It's not as good as the pristine grass finished beef but it's still way the hell better than thousands of other things you could choose from. We eat uh, supermarket ground beef all the time. We don't have a problem with it. We're not afraid of it. We, we realize, yeah. yeah, we both, we realize that that beef is not as good, but just because it's not as good does not make it bad. It's fine. Eat the best quality meat you can afford. That's why I made my YouTube video cheap keto is because if all you can afford is hot dogs and bologna and spam, you can do keto with that until you can afford to do better. A lot of people make carnivore a very elitist type yeah. way of eating and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't, it's not required and it's definitely not the only way you see benefits. There's plenty of yep. people, Kelly Hogan eats McDonald's yep. hamburger patties yep. every yep. day. Yep. And, and we do that. Doing if, great. if we're driving, we'll stop at Burger King mm. and Wendy's, uh, we'll eat, we'll eat, just eat the, the meat and that's it. And that meat is, I mean, it's USDA grade A, Whatever. There's no additives, no fillers. It's 100% beef. That's the only thing I would say is make sure it's 100% beef. Because if you start getting too cheap, they'll start to be, in, they'll inject liquids in there and they'll start to put fillers. You don't want any of that. You want 100% meat. But other than that, buy the best quality meat you can afford. How come you look so glowy? And I just kind of look mad. It's just sweat. Shimmer. I've got makeup on. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Dennis wants to know, will the keto carnivore diet help T levels? What else helps? Yeah. So eating your meat is absolutely going to help raise your testosterone level naturally. Keeping your carbohydrate intake as low as possible is going to help raise your testosterone level naturally. Lifting heavy weights anytime you can, and it, you don't have to go join the gym. You can literally lift two five-gallon buckets full of water. And, but any kind of exertion like that is going to raise your testosterone <clears throat> level. Running fast, get out behind the barn and run 50 yards as fast as you can go. That's going to raise your testosterone for several hours. Uh, also working out fasted. So if you're going to work out, do it in a fasted condition, that's going to raise your testosterone and your human growth hormone hundreds of percent for free. So why not do that? 
William, Trucker William, Val gave you a really good tip. So I hope you saw it. But if you didn't, I'm going to read it off to you. And I can't believe we didn't say this. I'm kind of ashamed of this. She's also a trucker and says, yes, it's difficult, but doable. I find grocery stories with big parking lots more often. Keep an electric skillet and canned fish and cod liver. Yeah, yes. there you go. Canned yeah. meat, man. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's perfect. This is a good one. And I told Dr. Barry he needs to do a whole video on this. But since someone asked, we're going to just do I it. I might online. do that. Thanks, by the way, for the super chats and the stickers and the stars, guys. Yes. That, that helps a lot. Bruce says, Dr. Barry, what are you eating? Are you going to eat carnivore for Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'm going to have a big fat ribeye. And then I'm going to have some duck, duck. Is that what we're having? Duck and turkey. Duck and turkey. Yeah, I'm going to have all that. And probably, I'm sure there'll be some bacon around somewhere. I'm going to have some of There's that. Gonna, I'm going to add, so I'm adapting my dressing recipe since I already made it once. I'm going to put chopped up bacon in it too. And chicken liver. Oof, but you're not bad. eating the dressing because you're carnivore. I might have a spoonful or two because it's a celebration. I will eat all the things. No carnivore for Nisha. Full on keto. Okay. Pink meat slime. Yeah, we don't want the pink meat slime. Yeah, that's no yeah, bueno. Yeah, you don't want to get too cheap. <laughs> that's got to be a troll. I'm not reading that. <laughs> uh, Jay Moore says I've reversed my enlarged prostate with ketovore diet, going from 22.5 to 4.1. Yeah, we hear this all the time, guys. If you're if you're having prostate trouble. You got to cut the carbs. The pro I'm not saying it's going to cure it, make it back like when you were 12 years old. It can write your name in the snow, but it is going to improve the symptoms. All right. Um, these are going really fast. Thanks for all the comments, guys. It's just like making my eyes cross. Oh, here we go. Keep them coming. Jamie says, can I have one meal a day on carnivore? 100%. Yeah. Um, a lot of carnivores just naturally gravitate to one meal a day. I'll do that. And so I probably three days a week, I'll eat one meal a day, three days a week, I'll eat two meals a day. And then who knows what will happen on the wild card day. But but uh, most carnivores either eat one or two meals a day and they eat until they're comfortably stuffed. They don't portion control. They don't count calories. They don't count anything. They just eat until they go, oh, I'm full. And that's when a carnivore stops eating. Okay. Pacer wants to know, is normal salt okay or is sea salt better? Yeah, I would recommend that you only use a salt that's mined from underneath the ground. So, and, and also try to use a local salt because we all love our earth and we want to keep the carbon footprint as low as possible. So if you live in Asia or Europe, eat pink Himalayan sea salt. That's real. If you live in the United States, you need to be eating Redmond's real salt. It's mined uh, near the, the Great Salt Lakes in Utah, in the U.S., and that way it's not, it doesn't have to be shipped on a cargo ship across the ocean. What you d want to definitely avoid is evaporated sea salt. So some of most of the artisanal sea salts are just evaporated sea salt of seawater. It's got microplastics. It's got nanoplastics. It's got leftovers from Fukushima. Don't eat that. You want salt that came from hundreds of feet under the earth that has been protected from all of our modern pollution. Redmond's has the best salt if you live in North America. Uh, there's a link up here on Facebook and down there on YouTube for Redmond's. And I think there's a discount code built into it. Dana says, what do you think the difference is between low carb and keto? Really good question. Yeah, I'm going to let you take that one. Uh, so it depends on who you ask. But you're yeah. asking us. So here's yeah. our answer. Uh, low carb essentially means you're just following the carbs. So you're tracking the carbs and ingredients don't really matter. So yeah. as long as whatever is on the label fits your carb macro, then you're able to eat it. Yep. Whereas keto, the way that we do it, we pay more attention to ingredients and carbs. Also, low carb is usually higher carbs. Mm -hmm. So about 100 total carbs yeah. a day. Where keto, we stay more under 20 total carbs a day. Yeah. And we stay away from grains, wheat, uh, any kind of sugar, beet sugar, cane sugar, organic sugar, coconut sugar, all the sugars. There's right. so many names for sugar. Maltodextrin, right. dextrose, <clears throat> all those things start to matter because yep. keto is not just for weight loss. It is great for weight loss, but it's also an anti-inflammatory diet and ingredients can cause inflammation Absolutely. in most people. Yeah. And, and also a lot of companies love to call things low carb 
because then they can put wheat flour in there or they can put canola oil in there. And we don't eat any of that stuff. And we recommend you don't eat it either. Uh, it's also you can eat low carb and not be in ketosis. And so you have to get the carbohydrate count, the total carb count low enough. Then you're in ketosis and you're getting all the benefits from that as well. All right. Also, honey. We don't eat honey, yeah. but some carnivores do. And we're not going to get into that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, you can have a tablespoon once a year. It's fine, but that, no more than that. Hang on, we got a super chat. Okay, my doctor told me I have fatty liver, and the cause was eating too much fatty yeah. foods. Do yeah. you have a study that I can take to my doctor? Yeah, in the show notes of my YouTube videos about fatty liver, there are links to the research that I talk about in those videos. So, for whatever condition you have whether it's fatty liver or diabetes or anything, always look down in the show notes of my video and you'll see the research if I talked about any. But yeah, there's several studies that show it's it's carbohydrates. It's definitely fructose. If you're drinking high fructose corn syrup or lots of fruit juice, which also has lots of fructose, that has to be metabolized differently than, the, than glucose. And that's going to cause fat to be built up in your liver. There is no research evidence to show that eating fat causes fatty liver. It just doesn't work that way. He's catching flies. Look at him. He's, he's, up. <laughs> he's out. He's out. Andrew says, what's your opinion on women uh, pregnant and doing keto? My fiance and I were doing keto. Then we got pregnant after trying for over a year. Her doctor has said that she should not do keto at all, but we've heard conflicting reviews. Yeah. Uh, from a medical standpoint, uh, keto is the proper human diet. Uh, we've been eating keto for 250,000 years since we've been on this planet. And we were, we're here, therefore we didn't die. Therefore we didn't go extinct, therefore we reproduced. I think it's perfectly fine as long as you're eating a real whole food, one ingredient ketogenic diet, which means if it's got more than three things on the label, that's that's not that. Because what you're trying to do with a pregnant woman is give her the most nutrient dense foods you can find for her. And that's keto. That's what keto is made of. That's what carnivore is made of is the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Now, since you're a woman with uterus and you've had a baby, I'm going to let you take it. And uh, also a keto. Uh, like that. Why yeah. didn't you lead with that? I'm a wife, I ate keto, and we had a great pregnancy. Yeah. yeah, I did keto throughout my pregnancy. Actually, was keto before I got pregnant, carnivore during IVF, got pregnant, did keto, went back to carnivore, and now I'm ketovore. Uh, my physician was totally for it. No reason for yep. me not to. I was eating whole foods. How could that be dangerous? Yep. The only thing I wasn't doing was eating a lot of carbs. Yeah. but that's also yeah. not dangerous. And um, all of my labs were good. I have Hashimoto's as well. And so everything was 100%. Every provider that I saw didn't care. They just didn't, saw a healthy baby, a healthy pregnancy, healthy mama. And that's what they were interested yeah. in. Also, Dr. Berry is doing a YouTube live. Oh, uh, yes. Dr. So Kiltz. Dr. Kiltz, who's a board certified endocrinologist specializing in fertility medicine. Who promotes keto carnivore. 100%. Yeah. And he's really leans towards super, carnivore. super low carb, almost carnivore. Uh, and so, yeah, Nisha did this her entire pregnancy. And any any doctor who remembers the basic human physiology that we were taught knows that a woman should be eating nutrient dense food. You need all the nutrition, all the vitamins, all the minerals. You're not getting that from goldfish crackers. OK, there's no nutrition in those. So why the hell would you tell a patient it's OK to snack on high carb foods like that? They are nutrient void. You're trying to literally build another human inside of mommy's little uh, construction zone. You've got to have the proper human diet to build that human with. Also, I would recommend Lily Nichols has a book. It's called yes. um, Real food, pregnancy. Real food pregnancy. You can get yeah, it on right. Amazon. I think there's an audible version as well. Yep. So buy that for yourself and your wife. Yep. It's got lots of great information in it. And you can take that to your doctor if they're having qualms about it and be like, look, yep. here is a whole book about how this is totally fine. All, we're just eating whole foods. How, yep. Tell me how that's yep. bad. And for anybody listening who has any medical condition, when you go see your doctor, you don't have to say the K word. Just say, I've cut all sugar and all grains out of my diet. I'm just going to eat meat and vegetables. Or you can say vegetables and meat. They might like that better, which is that's keto. That's what keto is, is meat and vegetables, right? And some nuts and cheese. There you go. That's keto. So if you say it like that, then the doctor doesn't immediately think about that, that news 
uh, article I saw on CNN last night that keto will give you, you know, keto butthole or whatever they're saying it'll give you now. You just say, I'm, I'm eating meat and vegetables like humans have always eaten. That's okay, right, doc? What's the doctor going to say? Yeah, sounds good. Continue. Yeah. Um, Alyssa wants to know, did we breastfeed? Yes, I breastfed exclusively. And now Beckett is a year old and he eats whole food, but he also nurses still. And I never had any problems with my supply. Now I did keto throughout my pregnancy. Before my pregnancy, my body was well adapted. I drank a lot of water and a lot of electrolytes and eat a lot of salt. I think that definitely helps with production. So um, I don't think if you went your whole pregnancy eating the standard American diet and then you ought to just stop and try to go keto, that's that going to put suck. stress on your yeah. body. I don't recommend that. But lowering your carbs slowly and making sure you're getting your electrolytes, that should be totally fine. Absolutely. Well said. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Will, oh, oh my. Did you do? I hate this computer. <laughs> okay. Oh, dang it. Where did. Which one was it? It was about adding. Okay, here we go. Daniel. All right. Can I add carbs around heavy workouts to build muscle? Uh, you can if you'd like. There's no research that shows that adding carbs actually will build more muscle. Your muscles are built out of protein. They're built out of they are their meat. So it would stand to reason that meat is going to contain everything you need to build more meat. Uh, there are multiple uh, bodybuilders out there and weightlifters: Sean Baker, Robert Sykes, uh, Danny Vega. Uh, um, what's um, Jamie Seaman? Yeah, Jamie Seaman that are muscled up and they don't carb up. They don't add carbs. They don't need that. They have plenty of energy from the ketones and they have plenty of muscle building stuff from eating the muscle of other animals. Yeah. Don't you leave out Dr. Jamie now. I was, I was trying that to think woman, of Goody Beats. I, That's I, it. Yeah. Goody Beats is a good one too. Yeah. But Dr. Jamie, yeah. she's a beast. She's jacked. She's also a beauty queen and an OBGYN. Mm -hmm. And you, if you don't she's follow Misery's her. Nebraska. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's at Dr. Fit and Fabulous. She has a YouTube channel now, too, so you need to go check her out. She's fantastic. Okay. Whoop. These are y'all are really commenting it up tonight. Bring it up to Okay, best electrolytes to use. All right. Well, there are so many. <laughs> I have I have my favorite. You have your favorite. Yeah. Do I have it? I was gonna grab it. I don't see it. So I, I use Keto Chow's electrolyte drops for a long time. And then I actually got with Chris Bayer and I said, Hey, I want to drop. That's not just electrolytes, but actually has all the minerals that we need. And electrolytes are minerals. And so he and I came up with the daily minerals and that's got all the electrolytes plus all the other minerals. And that's what I, I put a few drops in every cup of coffee. I put a few drops on every steak that I cook because it tastes salty and it gives me all my minerals and electrolytes. Which is the one you like? So for those of you who are, want something that tastes <coughs> good, um, his electrolytes are unflavored, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a flavor. It means they're not yeah. tasty. They don't so have an artificial flavor. They taste like minerals yeah. and salt, and so some people don't like that. Uh, there are several good tasting ones. So here are my top two. All right, Redmond's makes really good ones. They're Relight, and they have berry and lemon lime, lemon lime and one other, and an unflavored. So if you're fasting and you don't want to eat drink something sweet, there's an unflavored one as well that also tastes salty. They and all then, taste great, by the way. And then L M N T. There's a really tasty as well. So both of those are really good. You can yep. find both of those on Amazon or just the Redmond site. And I think we have a discount for the electrolytes. So I think it's Dr. Berry 10. Yeah. And I think we've got a link to the re Relight and to the Daily Minerals up, yeah. above or below, depending on what platform you're on. Yes, yes, yes. So you don't eat donuts? No, we don't no, eat donuts. No, we don't eat donuts. No. <laughs> Although I think Maria Emmerich has a keto donut recipe. So if you really wanted a yeah. like donut, you could have a keto one. Like here's the thing about keto that I think people don't understand. It's like, well, you can't eat that. Literally everything that anybody could say, you can't eat that. I could say, well, I can have the keto version. That's probably better. More nutrient dense and and most better of the better for you and tastier. Most sometimes. of the stuff that her and Kim Howerton and, and Maria make, yeah. holy crap, it's so good. Like I never feel like I'm missing out because no. there is a substitute for that. That yeah. on the whole is yeah. genuinely better. Yeah. You think you miss pasta? You really like Alfredo sauce and Alfredo sauce. Guess what? It's keto. If you make it, it's just cheese and butter. Yep, that's it. 
and garlic. Like it's keto and the pasta tastes like crap. Go, it tastes like cardboard. Eat it without any sauce on it. Yeah. So you dice your chicken up, you pour Alfredo sauce on it. You got chicken Alfredo without the noodles. The noodles are just a vehicle that are causing you problems and they don't even taste good. True. I'm just saying. I'm going to get off my slow box now. Do you guys eat? We kind of already answered that. Organic meats. Ugh. If you can afford organic, eat organic. If you can't afford it, you, you can do just fine without it. Yeah, and there's substitutes for noodles, too. I don't really miss noodles that much, but you yeah. can make zucchini noodles. or There's all kinds of yeah. replacements. Well, and they're miracle noodles. Is that Yeah, keto? they're made from yeah. mushrooms. I think you're right. I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, Tanya wants to know, is there such a thing as being allergic to red meat? Yeah, there's a, a condition called alpha-gal that you can get from tick bites. That It's a temporary condition. It lasts weeks to months at where you will react to red meat. But to my knowledge, other than that, I've not read of any documented uh, red meat allergies in human beings because it's such an ancestrally appropriate food. It's just almost impossible for that to happen. But the ticks will make you temporarily allergic to meat. <coughs> okay, don't spam. Oh my gosh, I can't read. Yeah, rice cauliflower is a good alternative to rice. And if you don't know, our friend Melissa, her blog is, uh, what is it? Cookingketowithfaith.com. Cooking. She has a recipe for fried rice using cauliflower rice. My dad, who does not eat vegetables, hates, Puerto Rican. hates vegetables. Rice is like the number one food group for Puerto Ricans. And she made it for him. He didn't know it wasn't rice. The way she cooks it. Yeah. He was arguing. We're like, it's cauliflower. He's like, no, no, no. It's no. Not. I no have way. a video of him eating it. Yeah. Is that on your YouTube yes, channel? Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. It's so funny. Pedro is just funny. All right. Somebody asked about what about diet cokes? Are those keto, sugar free drinks, diet drinks? What do you think? Well, a lot of people, when they first start keto, they can use Diet Coke, Diet Dr. Pepper, and they can lose fat and they can get healthier. And it seems like most people at a certain point, they've got to let even those go as well. But many people we know have lost over 100 pounds and they continue drinking a Diet Coke a day or a Diet Dr. Pepper a day or whatever, and they, they reach their goal. So I think it's totally possible to use that as a tool but I think it'd be better for your overall health if you try to slowly but surely wean those out. And one of the ways that I've been able, I used to be a diet Dr. Pepper and a diet Mountain Dew, a holic. Okay. I used to have to have three or four of those every day. And the way I weaned down and stopped them is I started buying sparkling water like Perrier or San Pellegrino or Gerald Steiner. And I would mix it half and half with the Diet Dr. Pepper or the Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, whatever. And you would think, oh, that'll dilute it and it'll taste terrible. But this still has the fizz in it. And you'll be surprised that yeah, I like Diet Dr. Pepper better cut half and half with Perrier than I do just the full strength Diet Dr. Pepper. It tastes better. And so that way you're cutting your diet drink habit in half and you're drinking more water, which is never a bad thing. I think that's an excellent strategy as well. I don't think it's mandatory to quit them, but I think ultimately you probably should look at it because they're made in a factory. They're made with lots of chemicals. Anytime something says natural flavoring on it, do you do you realize that the, the FDA natural flavorings can be one of 10,000 different chemicals that's made in a chemical factory? That's the way the law reads. So uh, use them if you need to for now, but try to be slowly but surely weaning them out of your life. All right, let's see what's going on here. Oh, I, I was, uh, Mary said she was told no apple cider vinegar or lemon juice if you have osteoporosis. Uh, your opinion appreciated. I'm keto. Probably the reason they said that is because those things will tend to make your, your urine acidic. And many doctors have the mistaken belief that acidic urine will pull calcium out of your bones as if your body is an idiot and doesn't know how important calcium in your bones is. Uh, the truth of the matter is that's not true at all. Uh, having acidic urine just means that you needed to get rid of some extra acid out of your bloodstream. That's how your body does that. Uh, using apple cider vinegar occasionally is totally fine. 
uh, lemon juice as long as you watch the carbs. Don't use the juice from an entire lemon, just a few drops for flavor. Totally fine. It's not going to affect your bones at all. Oh, here's a good question. So Jamie says, how long does it take to really reduce your A1C levels? And this is an excellent question. So many of you guys out there have pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes. It's uncontrolled. When you go keto, you are going to notice probably a full point reduction in your A1C per month. And I'm not talking about a tenth of a point. I'm talking about you're going to go from a 10 to a 9 in one month. And depending on how high it is. Now, if you're a if you're a six point one right now and you're pre diabetic, it's not going to drop a full point a month. You might drop two or three tenths of a point. But if you've got a crazy high A one C, Jamie, you'll drop it a point a, a month every month for a few months. Uh, we've seen people drop their A one C three, four, five points in three months. And I didn't say tenths of a point because most of the prescription medications. The way they got FDA approved is that they they showed that they could reduce your A1C by three tenths of a percent. That's really not that big a deal, but they got the FDA indication. Then they run millions of dollars of ads on television, and then you think that their pill is going to work magic or their injection is going to do magic inside your body. When really, what's going to do the magic is eating a very low carb carbohydrate proper human diet. Great question. Uh, Danny says, Dr. Barry, what type of meal replacement protein is best? Uh, I don't think any of them are worth the money. If you want protein, you need to eat meat. That's what human beings have been doing for a quarter of a million years. If we needed protein, we ate meat. That's what meat is. Meat is fat and protein. If you need collagen, you're not going to take a, a collagen powder you're going to eat more meat and you're going to eat the, the types of things we talk about that are rich in collagen. Well, Roxanne, thank you. Uh, I think you're probably awesome too. Oh, okay. Here's a good one. Uh, Yorgos says, uh, which is the most nutritious meat, beef, chicken, lamb, or other? I think it depends on the person. I think if they are properly pastured and raised and allowed to eat the, the ancestrally appropriate foods that they're supposed to eat, I think that beef and lamb, any of the ruminants, so beef, lamb, and goat are probably the most nutrient-dense and ancestrally appropriate meats that we can possibly eat, any ruminant. So that would include wild venison, elk, boar, not boar, elk or moose, caribou, reindeer, that those are the things that human beings have been eating for tens of thousands of years. I think chicken is absolutely fine as long as it's a chicken that's been allowed to run around and eat bugs and grass. That's going to be very nutritious, nutrient dense meat. The same goes for pork. If it's been, if the pig has been able to run around and eat grub worms and acorns and grass and weeds, that's going to be nutrient dense pork. Uh, that, that's that's just my take on that. If you lock an animal in a feedlot and feed them a, a, a diet that's not natural, then there's, it's still going to be meat because it still goes through the rumen and is magically transformed into meat. But it's not going to be as high quality meat as if it were raised properly. And it's also, I feel like, a little unethical to make animals eat things they're not designed to. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's a good question. Getting Stuff Done says, what diet would you suggest for an older person recently diagnosed with follicular lymphoma? And now I, I, this is going to sound like I'm dodging your question, but I'm not. Uh, a person who's been diagnosed who's elderly with, and they've been diagnosed with follicular lymphoma, they should eat a proper human diet, which is a diet rich in lots of fatty meat and maybe a little bit of veg. That goes for any diagnosis that you can put in this sentence. What diet would you uh, suggest for a three-year-old human or for a 103-year-old human who was recently diagnosed with, literally, fill in the blank, any diagnosis you fill in the blank, the answer from a common sense standpoint, from a paleoanthropological standpoint is going to be a proper human diet that's full of lots of fatty meat maybe a little bit of veg, maybe some berries every now and then, maybe some honey every now and then, but the majority of your daily food is going to be fatty meat with a little veg. That's what we've eaten the, our entirety on this planet, and that's what we should eat 15,000 years from now 
we should still eat lots of fatty meat with a little bit of veg, regardless of how old you are, regardless of what diagnosis you have. I think that answered that. <coughs> yeah, Mike, Mike, wherever he lives, he has to pay 10 bucks a pound for ground beef. I know, Mike, I know. Uh, but the, the point here is ultimately is when you pay for anything, you want quality. And the, the, the one marker of quality in food is its nutrient density. How many vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids does it have? So you could spend your 10 bucks and buy, what, 20 boxes of breakfast cereal, but you would get more nutrition from the pound of ground beef. And so for, your, for, for the bang for the buck, you need to spend the money for meat. Now try to get, the, you know, buy the best meat you can afford, but there's just no nutrition in the processed high carbohydrate crap. I'm sorry. And so you're, you are wasting your money if you're buying crackers and, and cookies and breakfast cereal. That's the true waste of money, not spending a little extra for, for meat. But I understand money's money. I used to be broke as a joke, my friend. I do understand how it feels. Uh, let's see. Um, Ari wants to know, have I read about any supplements that help with the, the virus, which shall not be named? I've seen several studies that having vitamin D levels that are above uh, the average range. So having a vitamin D level from 50 to 75 is going to help protect you from any virus, including the one that shall not be named. Um, eating a proper human diet is going to optimize your immune system so you can fight off any virus, including this one. Eating a very low carbohydrate diet is not going to slow down and muck up the behavior of your lymphocytes and your macrophages, which are the first line of defense for, for all infection, whether it's viral, bacterial, or fungal. So a proper human diet plus plenty of vitamin D. Um, zinc also is very important. I've got a YouTube video about zinc rich keto foods. That, that's also very important. There's a number of, of uh, supplements, but those I think are the most important. Welcome back. Did you put him back out? Yeah. Oh, wow. You're a ninja. All right. Let's see. I'm getting hungry. What's for supper? Brisket. Brisket. <laughs> okay. Jennifer says, how many pounds of meat should you eat a day? That depends on many things, Jennifer. What does it depend on? How hungry are you? How hungry you are, how much you weigh, how much you want to weigh. Uh, and so it's different for every different size person. Beckett would not eat as many pounds of meat as day as I would, but he would eat meat until he were full, until he said, all done, and he went and played. Then that's when we would stop feeding him meat. I don't do this when I'm all done. I just do this and then I walk away from the table. That means I'm all done. And so that's what you should do too. Think of any animal in the wild. Do they measure how much food they eat? Do they weigh it? Do they calculate the, no, they don't do any of that. They just eat ancestrally appropriate, species appropriate food until they're full. Then they walk away. And that's what we should do too. So it depends, Jennifer. You need to eat meat until you're full and then stop eating. That's how much meat you should eat. <laughs> Rochelle says, did I see this being said, ketovore, what is the ratio of yeah. that diet? Yeah. So I'm ketovore. <laughs> I would say being ketovore means that 85% of your meal comes from an animal. So it's either meat or eggs, cheese, butter, all that stuff, you know, Animals are animal byproducts. And yeah. then you have a little veg. For me, I very rarely eat anything other than onion and garlic. The rest of my meal is meat. For spice, yeah. Yeah. Every now and then I have an <clears throat> avocado. Um, very rarely do I branch out to anything else. But the way I started was I would eat carnivore Monday through Friday. And then Saturday, Sunday, I would just be keto. So some people do it that way. And some people alternate days it's just totally up to you it's what works best for you for yep. me keeping my Hashimoto's in remission this is the way that works for me and it's also what I enjoy at this yep. point so the ketovore diet is is a brilliant way of eating it's very delicious it's very filling 
uh, and many, many people benefit greatly from it. Even people who keto helped a little, but not all the way. Ketovore is kind of the next step. And Nisha has a full video about Ketovore on her YouTube channel. I have a full video about Ketovore on my YouTube channel too. So check those out. Uh, for many people, when they go from low carb to keto, that's a huge improvement, but they don't get quite to where they want to be. The next step is Ketovore. And so if you don't know what that is, watch Nisha and my uh, my YouTube videos and then you'll know. You know, so I do Ketovore what I eat in a day vlogs on my channel. So if, if you just go to YouTube and type in Ketovore or Nisha, it'll pop up all of my videos and you can binge watch them yep. and see what all we eat. Yep. It's a um, meat. Spoiler. It's always delicious. It's meat yep. uh, with onion. And then every now and then, like I said, avocado. So. Yep. Maybe an olive. And every sometimes, now and then. Yeah. Olives and pickles. Pickles. You know, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. I would say probably ketovore is, is 10 total grams of carbs a day or less. That's probably, and there's no official definition. Uh, people in the keto community just kind of made that term up. But I would say it's probably 10 total grams of carbs or less a day would be a keto board. <coughs> Frank says, hey, hey Frank. Dr. Barry and Nisha started keto 12 months ago after watching your skin tag video. Went from 200 pounds to 154. What? Yeah. Most skin tags have reabsorbed and chronic bronchitis is gone. No more yep. meds and sleep yep. apnea is down yep. from zero points. I don't know what that means. To That's probably zero a setting. Points Oh, your settings yeah, are down. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Now, let's talk about that for just a second. That was that was Frank. Where'd Frank go? Right. Okay. Click that again. Frankie. Yeah. And so if, if you guys don't know, skin tags are just a sign of hyperinsulinemia or insulin resistance. I've got a YouTube video that explains it all. But go back one more time. I was going to talk about something important. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, chronic bronchitis. Yeah. So everybody out there listening who has COPD, chronic bronchitis or asthma, any variant, any form of asthma, go watch my YouTube videos about this. You think that it's a, just a lung condition. You think it's pollen. You think it's perfume and fumes and, and pollution. Yeah, that's part of it. That's part of what sets you off. But what sets you up for it? Okay. Just like Frank said, we've had so many thousands of people who said, I thought I was going to have chronic persistent asthma for life or COPD, I'd have to have an eye, but no, if you first of all, stop smoking. But secondly, you've got to feed your lungs the, the, the proper human diet so they can rebuild new lung tissue. Your lungs can do that. They're, they're slower than some parts of your body, but they absolutely can. You can significantly improve your chronic bronchitis, your asthma, your COPD, all that gets better with keto or ketobore or carnivore. Okay. I'm done. Okay, well, it's gone now, so I can't read it. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Way to go, Kenneth. Sorry. Uh, how come Frank didn't go away? He, that's weird. Because it was before it was for, oh, you. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Well, why'd you jump then? Brayden, nobody wants to see your OnlyFans. Go away, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs> I this mean, is not an OnlyFans platform. Maybe somebody wants to see it, but okay, well. let's talk about it another day. Yes. Taken care of. So sorry. I The comments went. I got it now. Thank you for pointing him out. <laughs> or her. I don't know. Uh, hey, you got to make money, right? All right. Here's a good one. MC says, Dr. Barry, what's the best bang for your buck when it comes to liver, beef, or cod? Mm, God. I'd have to sit down and run the macros. Uh, and, and the, the vitamins and minerals, but it also depends on how the cow is fed. So I would say that if you're talking about a, a uh, feedlot cow liver, beef liver, that's probably not quite as good as cod, wild caught cod liver, but a grass finished uh, beef liver, God, I don't know. That, that'd be a close call. If you, I don't care if you eat beef liver or cod liver, I win and you win. So don't even worry about it. Okay, let's see here. Ada wants to know, what is your take on articles that say veggies are needed for stomachs uh, process to keep colon polyps at bay? Yeah, well, I would say, uh, where's the research? Show me the research. Not you, Ada, but the experts saying those things. There's not a shred of evidence that shows that to be true. All of the stories you've heard about fiber, you've got to have it to poop. That all comes from an anthropologist who was studying a native tribe who were, they were kind of landlocked and they had to eat plants. And so they just ate plants for like 12 hours a day and they pooped these ginormous piles of poop. 
And he said the 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 evidence of a healthy body is a is a large pile of poop. And he was a he was probably from Harvard. He was very respected in the anth- anthropology community, and that just became dogma. Everybody just believed that because Doctor So and So said it. But there's not a shred of research to to prove that that's true. There are people doing a carnivore diet who have not had a speck of plant food in their mouth for 15 years, and their colons work great. They don't have any more polyps than the general population. Uh, they, it just doesn't work that way. Human beings are designed to eat meat. If you want to add some veg, you can, but the veg, there's nothing magical about eating lots of plants. I know that we've been told that there is, but when you actually look at the research, it's severely lacking. One of these days, you know what's going to happen. Tell he's going to be doing all this, and he's going to knock me right out of my chair, and it's going to be then, on live, and and somebody's going <laughs> to screen grab it and make a video where it's me going, ah, yeah. Doctor Barry, can't his wait, wife. can't wait. That's going to happen. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh my goodness! Thank you, everybody, for trying my cornbread and giving me feedback. Thank yes. you. I'm so glad you guys are liking it. Kids and fruit. Jennifer, I've seen your question seven times. I'm trying to grab it. Sorry. Uh, kids and fruit. My kids do keto plus fruit. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, try to make it the most nutrient dense fruit that you can get. So you want the most nutrition per carbohydrate that you can get. And that's usually berries like blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries. Uh, the fruits that are completely devoid of nutrition are bananas and uh, little, uh, what do you call them, cuties, the little tangerines, tangelos that are genetically engineered. What, what are they called? Cuties. Cuties, yeah. yeah. And then grapes, most uh, most all those ginormous grapes. And the, the cotton candy grapes? Yeah, they're just sugar. They've got no meaningful nutrition at all. Uh, I think it's fine for kids to eat some berries. I think that's perfectly appropriate and fine. Their metabolism can handle it, whereas my metabolism, I would gain weight with that. That'd be too many carbs for me. But uh, we actually made Beckett a little keto cheesecake, a little mini for his personal cake. And we put some blueberries on top of it for his one year birthday. It was the first time he'd ever seen a blueberry. Mm-hmm. And he picked it up and looked at it. And I, did he try no, to? No, I had to give it to him. Yeah, he, he was yeah. just, th- he was throwing them. And Misha put one in his mouth and he bit it. And <laughs> he kind of went like, not gross, but like, what the heck? And then he started eating the cheesecake, which didn't have any sweetener. It was just, it was just cheese, cheese and eggs. Yeah, and butter. And he just went out, he just scooped the blueberries off and ate the, the yeah. fat. Yeah. I tried to give him a piece of an apple. We have an apple ranch. I mean, not ranch. <laughs> apple orchard in Nashville that they grow everything's organic and so I bought one apple and I gave him a little piece this was right after he turned one as well just to he was like mad at me he's like that's just good he like was yeah he he doesn't like it what you'll find is if you start kids out eating meat early Mm -hmm. enough they freaking love meat we just had ribs tonight and I gave and Beckett brisket. a rib with some remnants of the meat on it. And he gnawed the, the bone so clean that when he threw it in the floor, Rhett Butler, our dog wouldn't even touch it. Yeah. He Kids love meat. meat. Okay. We teach them to crave sugar and to want sugar. And uh, I don't think, I don't think <clears throat> berries, I think they're probably fine, but stay away from the bananas and the grapes and the, all that stuff. Mr. George says, what about mushrooms? Are we designed to eat mushrooms? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't think mushrooms should be a large part of your diet, but they are fairly low carb compared to many, many fruits and all of the processed crap. Uh, There is some nutrition in there. If the mushrooms have been exposed to sunlight, they actually make a little bit of vitamin D, not a lot of bit, but a little bit. So I think mushrooms are fine. We actually, we enjoy mushrooms. Uh, and when, uh, when we are at the farm full time, I'm going to actually try to grow some shiitake mushrooms on some oak logs. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> ripe plantains. So ripe plantains are even sweeter than bananas. I feel like. Yeah. They're very sweet. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, my family is Puerto Rican and so we love plantains, Yeah, but they are so super sweet. Yeah. They're delicious, but yeah. I can't eat them anymore. Yeah. There's just no meaningful nutrition <laughs> in a plantain or a banana. They're just all carbs and starch. Yeah. But man, you're a boy looking. Make some stuff. Like <clears throat> mm. Oh my goodness. I need some water. Okay. I need some too. 
It's been cold. It's been hot. It's been cold. It's been hot. Fermented meat. That's a good question. So now, what do you think about I don't have meat? a lot of experience with fermented meat. We but ate, what was that fish that Carrie had? Mm, herring? Pickled herring. Yeah, pickled herring. I don't know if that's Is just that pickled fermented, or fermented. Oh, okay. But there, there are people who eat fermented meat a lot. And I'll, I'll tell you this, the human acidity in our stomach is, is a pH of 1.8, 1.5 to 1.8. That is very, very acidic. The only other animals that have a, a stomach pH that acidic are scavengers, like buzzards, literally. And so a lot of the paleoanthropological theory is, is that we started out eating kills, that the, the big tigers and lions, they'd kill something, eat all they wanted, and then we'd wait till they left and then we'd go in and clean up what was left. And that's probably true. Also, bone marrow and brains, we learned how to use big rocks to break those bones and crack that skull. Then we could eat the, the brains and the marrow. And maybe they were a few days old. And there's a theory that that's why our stomach acid is so low. Whereas the average herbivore, they have a stomach pH of five or six or seven, which is not nearly as acidic as ours. I think fermented meat's probably fine. I just don't have a lot of experience with it myself. I'd like and to try it. I would, I would try a bite. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But I don't know how to prepare it properly. I don't want to kill, kill us or kill anybody. So I'll let somebody who's more experienced than me uh, make the, the fermented meat. I didn't even know about that. You know how I learned about it? Oh. Game of Thrones. Uh, he had fermented crab. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. is that a real thing? Yeah, it is. definitely. Miss Darlene says she does not like organ meat. What can she do? Well, there is a <laughs> supplement company called Ancestral Supplements that they take liver and brain and heart and all the organs and they freeze dry them. Then they grind them up. Then they put them in capsules. So you can take uh, four, six, eight of those capsules a day. And that's like eating one or two or three ounces of that organ meat. I've got a link up here on Facebook and down here on YouTube that you can check out their products. Now, I want you to only use their product until you learn to like organ meats. I want you to keep trying things like Nisha's li liver mousse recipe that her... Yeah. Oh, that, that Kim Howerton and Nisha did. Is that on your YouTube? It's on mine, but it's Kim's recipe. It's Kim's recipe. Yeah, yeah that's delicious. And if uh, you might want to try some Braunschweiger okay. or some liverwurst, some liver pate, some liver mousse. The, there's more ways to eat liver than to just cut up a hunk of raw liver and eat it. But until you learn to like it, take Ancestral Supplements, liver supplement, and there's a link. Um. <clears throat> Mia wants to know your opinion on nut butters and what's the best one? Yeah, any nut butter is <coughs> con is processed, concentrated nuts, right? And so eating five or six almonds, not a big deal. Probably completely ancestrally appropriate. We do that a few times a year. But when you eat a couple of tablespoons of almond butter, you're getting, I've, I've read, 20 to 40 almonds. That's a lot of almonds. You got to count the carbs for that. Now, you absolutely want it to have no sugar of any kind whatsoever. You want it to have no artificial crap, no colors, any of that. Uh, and you want to just eat the minimum no amount that you can get by with eating. That, that would be my advice. Any other advice on nut butters? Um. When I first started keto... <clears throat> I eat the heck out of nuts and nut butter. I eat so much. He would go like, it was yeah. gluttonous the yeah. way that lot, he ate nut nuts. butter. Yeah. I think that there are better nuts like when it comes to oxalates and uh, like there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on with peanuts, mold, and just you read about all the bad things. So peanut butter is probably the worst yep. on the scale. I agree. Um, and there's a lot of good brands, quality brands that don't put canola oil and those kind of things right. in there. So if you are going to eat a nut butter, make sure that the ingredients are just yep. the nuts and, and coconut oil and salt or something to that nature that yep. doesn't have that bad oils because that's that's what gets you even more mm -hmm. on top of the sugar too you can get butters that are unsweetened and then you can add allulose or whatever sweetener if you want to sweeten it or you can get used to it being bitter we found that at, you know towards the end of us using it we were liking the bitter sweet of the nut butter without yep. the sweetened yep. <clears throat> after the after what, 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 well, and I think a good Added sugar. <laughs> uh, people, uh, maybe some people don't understand this. When you first start keto, you're probably used to chicken nuggets and ketchup and then, you know, pie for dessert. 
And when you eat nuts, they don't taste sweet to you. But one of the best ways to know that you're fat, that you're becoming keto adapted and your taste buds are maturing is that you, when you eat an almond, a raw almond, it tastes sweet. And so as you move into keto and you stay there and you get used to it, nuts actually have carbs. They actually have some sugar in there and they'll start to taste sweet to you. When that happens, uh, that's when it's time to probably move a little further towards carnivore because you'll really start to love the nut butters like I did and you'll just eat a giant, ginormous amount. Yeah. I used to eat a lot. I used to, I used to take a tongue depressor at the clinic. Oh, yeah. You remember that? I make yeah. nut sickles and I would dip it down in the almond butter. And I had this huge bowl that had pine nuts, pepitos, all kinds of seeds. Because back then I really believed all the well, seeds were good paleo. for me. Yeah, yeah. Paleo and early keto. And I would stick the tongue depressor covered with nut butter down into the seeds. And it, I will have like a thousand seeds on my nut butter and then I would eat that. And I would do 80 that, times a day. Yeah, I would do that literally 30 times a day in between. I was just constantly eating as I was learning how to do keto. That's not how you do it, by the way. I That's, don't know how you ate that way. How did you even like that? We ate so much spaghetti squash and quinoa and Ezekiel bread. <laughs> it wasn't even good. Yeah, it was kind of bad. But I was, we were learning. We were fumbling around in the dark trying to rediscover the proper human. I always diet. would eat on the way home and be like, oh, I'm full. Mm. I just want a little. Spaghetti squash. You can have it all. <laughs> she did that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, George wants to know, what about oysters? Do we eat them? Don't they have lots of zinc? They do have lots of zinc. They're one of my foods I talk about on my zinc video on YouTube. <clears throat> They're perfectly ancestrally appropriate. They're full of lots of minerals, not just zinc. Eat your oysters. Absolutely. We love oysters. Yeah. We eat this them one every can chance eat four we dozen by oysters. myself. Yeah, you yeah. think I'm kidding? No, not kidding. And I ate them while I was pregnant too. All the time. Yep. Pickle juice works, but oh, that's not a question. That's not a question. Oh yeah, you can make your own nut butter too. Mm. It's super easy. Yep. So keep that in mind. Okay, here's a good one. Raw milk, opinions on milk that hasn't been pasteurized. Yeah. What do you think? I think raw milk is less bad than processed, pasteurized, homogenized milk. Now, it depends on what age human you're talking about. If we're talking about a, a human up to, say, seven years of age, uh, milk's fine for them. And I'd rather them have raw milk than homogenized, pasteurized milk. But after about the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's different for each person. We all develop some degree of lactose intolerance. You may not know that two thirds of the humans on this planet have lactose intolerance. It's actually more rare to be able to tolerate lactose than it is to not be able to tolerate it. But in, in certain parts of the U.S., you've never heard of lactose intolerance, and it seems weird to you, but it's actually, the, that's the default for human it's beings. the rule, not the exception. Absolutely. And people who seemingly tolerate lactose, they still have infl inflammation in their joints or inflammation in their gut. They may not have the classic lactose in intolerance symptoms, but they have other symptoms. Trust me. When I, if, when, if I went back to drinking milk, I would have rosacea. I would have heartburn. I would have knee pain. It, it's it, milk is made for baby mammals. That's who's supposed to drink milk. And for humans at about the age of five, six, seven, somewhere in there, we start to lose the ability to use milk as a nutritional food. That's why as adults, we use the butter, the fat part of the milk, but we don't use the, the lactose definitely. And even most of the protein we try to get rid of because it's inflammatory for a lot of grown humans. But if you're going to drink milk, damn it, Raw milk is less bad than pasteurized, it homogenized. It's delicious. It's really good. Really I tasty. drank some while I was pregnant yep. when I had the access to it while yep. we were in Utah. Yep. Mm. So good. Free milk. Yep. And there's actually a lot of research for pregnant women to drink raw yep. milk as yep. well. What is it? Weston A. Price? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. No. That's it? No more Toki. Okay. We actually went over tonight. Oh, I didn't even realize. Yeah. I'm having fun. I noticed. That's why I kept letting you talk. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. That was fun. Now, <laughs> if you joined us late, you can go back and watch this again. It's going to be saved on YouTube and on Facebook. And uh, continue to ask questions in the comments. Also, if you see a question that you know the answer to, feel free to reach out and make new keto friends. You might even find a, a keto brother or sister out there. Be nice. Be nice. Play no nice. politics. No drama, God, no trauma. No, Just let's all help each other be healthier and happier. Let's and do. have a happy Thanksgiving.
Thanksgiving. Yes. Eat some turkey or duck or ribeye. Yes. Yeah. Thanks so much for the stars on Facebook. Thanks so much for the super chats and the stickers on YouTube. You guys, that makes our day when you do that. If you did not get enough of us tonight, we're going to be live in our private Facebook group tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central. The way you get access to that is to become a Facebook supporter or become a patron on patreon.com. And then you'll 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 be in like Flynn and you can be in the secret Facebook group. But if you've had enough of us for tonight, then we'll just see you next Monday night at 7 p.m. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving and spend lots of time with your family. Absolutely. Enjoy the good food yeah. and remember Thanksgiving is about family and friends and relationships and connections. There's also food, and that's fine, but it's not all about the dessert table. Stay away from the dessert table, okay? See you next time.